Uh, up with this, up with this, we will not put. We're not going to have our children stultified and insulted by the teaching of garbage of this kind. And it seems to me an outrage that Richard has fewer friends in his profession. It's for them, I think, to rally and draw the sword and say, with our help too, that this nonsense uh, will not pass. Now, um, some of you know, well, I guess you all know now, that um, the words of one of my favorite poets, Ernest Dowson, are quite often with me. Um, Dowson stole them actually from the Roman poet Horace. Um, non sum qualis eram. I'm, I'm not as I was. Um, and though, as I know as well as you do, there's no point in arguing about the actual date or time of departure because I like to think there would be no good time. I hope you agree with that. <laughs> uh, There would, there would always be something that I urgently felt I ought to do or say. And one mustn't repine or give in to self-pity about that. But at this present moment, I have to say, I feel very envious of someone who's young and active and starting out in this argument. Just think of the extraordinary things that are happening to us. Go, for example, to the Smithsonian Museum, to the new, I hope you've done, done it, <coughs> to the new Hall of Human Origins. Magnificently curated new ex an exhibition, which shows, among other things, the, the branch, or branches along which perhaps three, certainly three, maybe four if you count Indonesia, humanoid, shall we say, anthropoid species, died out not very long ago, within measurable distance of 75,000 years or so, possibly destroyed by us, possibly not, we don't know. We know they decorated their graves. We think they probably had language ability. We don't know if they had souls. I'm sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> <coughs> we, we probably assume that they were deluded into having some kind of God. But no religion has yet pronounced on these cousins and brothers and sisters of ours because they don't fit. There's no way of fitting them into the ridiculous story that makes this tape wind round and round again and replay it and lead to us, to the grand solipsistic conclusion that this whole thing is designed with us in mind. But what a wonderful thing to be starting out in this tremendous new field of endeavor. How fabulous it would be if you had a gift for physics to get a job as an intern with Lawrence Krauss, for example, who's just beginning to unravel as very, very few people have yet dared to do the idea of the alternate and parallel universe. And with each horizon that we reach, we see more bending beautifully towards and away from us. The, the knowledge we have, say, not just of the uh, sentience, but also the cognition of animals is all of it incredibly recent, a matter of decades, and enormously rich, and yet again, very much challenging our own claim to primacy or supremacy in, in the biosphere and rich in every possible kind um, of discovery. I, I suppose I should begin to close now because I've said all I wanted to say for myself and I will join Richard if I may, you can ask me a question or two with your indulgence, but to say that I'm not going to quit until I absolutely I have to, but that I... <coughs> oh, please. But this I... Well, I wasn't finished. I'm not done. Um, till I absolutely have to. Um, but I so envy those who could, who could glimpse, I only mentioned three or four of the things that have magnetized and charmed and, and gratified me to think about in the recent past and, and how, how, how much I hope that each of you forms some such ambition 
this evening and carries it forward. In the meantime, we have the same job we always had, to say as, as thinking people and as humans that there are no final solutions. There is no absolute truth. There is no supreme leader. There is no totalitarian solution that says that if you will just give up your freedom of inquiry, if you will just give up, if you will simply abandon your critical faculties, a world of idiotic bliss can be yours. <laughs> you will certainly lose the faculties. Uh, and you may not know as a result that the idiotic bliss is even more idiotic than it looks. But we have to begin by repudiating all such claims. Grand rabbis, chief ayatollahs, infallible popes, the peddlers of surrogate, and mutant quasi political religion and worship, the dear leader, the great leader. We have no need of any of this. And looking at them and their record and the pathos of their supporters, I realize that it is they who are the grand impostors. And my own imposture this evening was mild by comparison. Thank you very much. I should have said that the uh, award is a, a beautiful collection of fossils, uh, a nautiloid cephalopod from the Devonian era. Um, so I guess we're to take questions, so questions to either Christopher or me. Um, and shall you sit down, shall I bring the microphone round? As long as I've got a microphone, yeah, it's okay. a lovelier. You can sit together, or I can stand. No, no right. Go ahead. Cat got your tongue. <laughs> I, I have no question. I just wish to thank you, sir, for making my life for 35 years a rational life. Thank you very much. I feel like I'm going to vouch that. I know it's like transforming for a lot of years. I see some pictures. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why in the world can't I have a hero like you? Well, because you shouldn't need or want to have heroes. Every time people say, when they're when I'm signing a book, I'm a terrific fan, I say, I don't want them to want me. You shouldn't be one for another. Now, and only that is needful, I think, for our discourse. 